Hello, this is T Chapman 500, and in this video, I am going to be giving a bit of a progress report on the development of the Solar Lander physics overhaul. So, right now, I have a little test scene set up where I'm testing the terrain generation as well as the new physics system. It appears to be working quite well, but I also have something else to show you. I just disabled the collision detection system for the entire planet. Now at the speed that this thing is going at, it should, in theory, reach the center of the planet where it just whips around and probably ends up flying off to who knows where. But as you can see, this is not the case because the gravity, because the object is inside the planet is actually decreasing linearly with decreasing distance. Now, when this thing pops out of the planet, depending on the height of the terrain, then the gravity will start increasing with the square of decreasing distance. So yeah, here we go. It came out of the planet and now this part looks like an actual orbit, while this part does not. So that's what I've been up to for um, the development of Solar Lander. Now in the default game modes there really shouldn't be any circumstance under which this happens except maybe if you are near the surface and the surface is below the mean radius of the planet. The script actually checks to see if you are closer to the center of the planet than what the radius is, and the terrain sometimes goes below that distance, allowing you to go below that distance slightly. So you're not going to experience this, but it is there nonetheless. And I just re-enabled collision detection while this thing was inside the planet. And um, what's actually going on here is that the terrain only extends downwards a little bit. So you saw where the thing is. And here's the collision objects. I have it at a very high resolution in terms of um, collision objects. And this is an optimization that I made to Solar Lander. So now it's split into tiny little pieces. And the idea here is that I'm counting on Unity's built-in collision detection system to change what object it's checking for collision based on the relative position of the physics body and the terrain mesh. Now this is a bit of a very high resolution, but that's fine. I'm just um, trying to check to see that it works. So now this thing's going to be inside the planet forever. Oh, and by the way, you will be able to tweak how many of these objects are generated and that's going to be based on the resolution of the terrain that's generated here. So for instance, you have um, four polygons, or actually this looks more like eight. So um, you have, I have this set to a very low setting for the number of polygons per object. And you can tweak this if you want. I will probably limit this to not going below 4. Oh, and it's always going to be a power of 2. And I'm going to make sure that it checks to see that it's a power of 2 before it starts generating. By the way, once the physics overhaul is completed, this screen that you see here, which is in the current version of Solar Lander, is going to look wildly different than it does right now. So the controls right now they're grouped by 
whether they're buttons or axes, that's no longer going to be the case. They will be grouped instead by what they do. So all of the rotate controls will be grouped together, the translate controls will be grouped together, and the throttle controls will be grouped together. There's also going to be no more primary and secondary assignments. For the axes, you will be able to assign both an axes and a button and use both. But other than that, there is going to be no more secondary assignments for any of the controls. Also, we are going to have the addition of assigning a button to zoom in and out as well as change the HUD mode. So you're not going to need to use the mouse while in game ever. And you can do all of the controls from a joystick or gamepad. Also for stuff like the rotate and translate controls, there will be an inertia which will basically smoothly translate between 0 and 1, with 0 being fully released and 1 being fully pressed. Setting the inertia to 0 will instantaneously transition between those two states. So that's a way to give you more control over the spacecraft without assigning a control to an axis. We'll also have a thing to just cancel the entire time warp thing. So push that button, time acceleration goes to 1x. You will also have buttons to smoothly increase or decrease the throttle without a throttle control. And I will also implement null zones. Actually, I have implemented null zones. And this button is probably going away. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next episode. This is T Chapman 500 signing off.